Hello and welcome. In the previous video, I talked about the connection and how we can connect our clients to the server. And in this video, I'm going to talk about RPC, which stands for Remote Procedure Call, and we can use them to send the data between our clients and the server and execute certain tasks using them. So when we start the project, if we take a look at the entities hierarchy in the server world, Every time a client connects to the server, an entity is going to be created with network ID attached to it. So we can use that to create some sort of event and detect when a client connects to the server. So in order to do that, I am going to create a system and name it server system. Let's open the server system and we can say public partial class and we can inherit from system base. Now we can implement the abstract class. So to make sure this system only executes in the server, we can add a filter. So whenever a client connects, an entity is going to be created in the server with network ID component. Let's also create another component and I'm going to name it initialized client. So we can use this to filter those entities with network ID and without initialized client and whenever that happens we know that this client just connected and then we can attach initialized client component to that entity and use that to create some sort of event to detect whenever a client gets connected to the server so in order to do that inside the on update i am going to run a for each and using the system api query i am going to look for any entity with network id but without initialized client. Also, I'm going to access the entity and to make changes to the entity, I am going to create a command buffer and at the end, I am going to call playback and dispose the command buffer. Now that we have that entities with network ID and without initialized client component, we can add initialized client component to that entity to make sure this event only gets called once and we can use a debug.log to print a message saying client connected with id equals to the id inside the network id component now if i go to the editor and to have multiple clients i am going to go to my desktop and create a folder name it build and let's actually go ahead and get a build for our project and I'm going to put it inside the build folder. Okay, our build is finished. We could have used the thin clients to test our changes, but I wanted to show you that our connection even works with a build version of our project. So let's go ahead and start the editor first. And now if I look at the console, you see that client connected with ID one and it's only been called once. Now, if I go ahead and play another instance of the project, it is going to open that for me. And if I go to the editor, you see that client connected with ID two. So now we have a system that could detect whenever a client gets connected. Also, let's go to the build settings and inside the player settings, Let's make our job easier for the future builds by putting this on window. And for the screen size, I'm gonna go with 800 and 600 height. So now we have the option to detect the player connection. Let's actually go ahead and create a client system. So a new script client system. And if we open the client system, let's add the partial and inherit from system base. Also, let's implement the abstract class. And I'm also going to override on create. Let's also make sure that this system runs only in a client world. So I'm gonna add the filter for client simulation. And as I mentioned before, in the server world, whenever a client gets connected to the server, an entity with network ID is going to be created in the server world but in the client world, whenever the client connects to the server, only one entity is going to be created in the client world, which represents that connection. So in the client system, inside on create, I am going to say require for update network ID, which means only run the update when there is a 
entity in the world with network ID and that means we have a connection with the server so an update only going to be running whenever we are connected to the server so let's start talking about RPCs. So it doesn't matter if you want to send an RPC from the server to the client or from the client to the server. In order to do that, you need to create an entity for each RPC that you want to send. And then you need to attach an RPC command to that entity and also attach send RPC command request and then the netcode is going to handle that RPC for you. So let's go ahead and actually do that. For a start, I am going to create a RPC command. We're going to create a struct and we choose a name for it. I'm going to name it client message RPC command and it needs to inherit from IRPC command. So inside this, you cannot use variables that have the ability to be set to null. You can have integers, you can have shorts, but you cannot have strings. So for the string, I'm going to use fixed string 64 bytes and let's name it message for now let's say on the client because it's a client system whenever we press the space we want to send a message to the server so in order to do that let's actually create a function for it inside the system i'm going to name it public void send message rpc and we can pass a string text also we need a reference to the world in order to create an entity First, we can make sure that world is not null and world is created. And then we can go ahead and create our entities using world entity manager create entity. And we're going to attach send RPC command request and client message RPC that we've created here. So whenever you want to send an RPC, you attach send RPC command request. And whenever you want to receive that, you're going to use receive RPC command request. We're going to do that in a minute. Inside our client message RPC command, we have a message that we need to set that text. So let's actually go ahead and use the entity manager of our world to set the component data of our entity that we just created. A new client message RPC command. I'm going to set the message variable to text. So when you are sending an RPC from client, the only target it's going to have is going to be server. But when you send an RPC from the server, you can actually set a target for it. And if you don't set a target for it, it's going to send it to all the clients. So now we have a send message RPC. Let's go to the update and detect whenever we press the space key. And in order to call the send message RPC, we need a reference to the world. And to do that, let's go to the connection manager. And here when we create our world, let's actually cut these two lines and bring them up here. So I'm going to define the world as a public static world. And that way we have access to those variables in the entire project. So back to the client system, we can call send message RPC and we pass a message. And because we are in the client system and this only runs on the client, we can use the connection manager that client world. So now in order to receive that RPC on the server, let's go to the server system. We need to run a query and look for any entity with client message RPC command attached to it. So that is a component that we are sending from our client. Also, that entity should have a receive RPC command request. So we are going to attach a send RPC from the client, but on the server, it is going to have a receive RPC command request because netcode is going to change that for you when it is going to pass the message between client and server. So let's go back to the server system. So I'm going to run a query and I'm going to use for each system API query. And I am going to look for receive RPC command request and client message RPC. So any entity with these two components is an RPC that has been sent from our client. I'm also get the entity access and we can print a log using the debug.log and inside this I am going to pass the command which is the client message RPC command and I'm going to use the message variable. Also I am going to use the request source connection index and 
version. So basically, we are going to print a log when we receive that RPC command from the client, but we also need to delete this entity because this debug.log is going to keep getting printed if we don't delete that entity. Let's do it using the command buffer we've created and say destroy entity and we can pass that entity. So if I go to the editor now and if I play the project here in the console we have client connected and if I hit the space it is going to say hello from that client. It's going to print the same message whenever I hit the space button. So this way we are sending a RPC from client to the server. Let's also go ahead and create an RPC command in the server system. So let's say you want to broadcast a message to your clients. In order to do that, you could use RPC. So inside the server system, I am going to also create a method and name it send message RPC. And it is going to take a text message, a world and an entity as target. So on the server, you can specify an entity and that is going to be the target of your RPC. And you can use that to send the RPC to a specific client. But if you leave that empty, it's going to be sent to all the clients. Now let's make sure the world is not null and has been created first. And now let's go ahead and create an RPC command for our entity. I am going to name it server message RPC command. And when we create the RPC entity, we can attach that component. Similar to our client, we are going to create an entity using the world entity manager. We're going to attach send RPC command request. And instead of client message RPC, we are going to send our server message RPC command. And we can go ahead and set the component data for that server message RPC command. And then we can check to see if the target entity is null or not. And if it is not null, we can set the component data for send RPC command request and set the target connection to that entity. So inside the update, let's say whenever a new client gets connected, we want to tell every single connected client about this new client. So we can use a send message RPC to do that. So here when we are doing a query for the entities with network ID and without initialized client, this is where the new client is connected. So let's go ahead and call the send message RPC and pass this text inside the debug log as the message. Also, I am going to pass the connection manager dot server world and I'm not going to send any target. So this is how you can send an RPC from the server to all the clients. Now we can go to our client system and actually receive that message in the update. So we need to look for any entity with receive RPC command request and also server message or PC command. So if we find any entity with those components, then it is a RPC command from the server. And remember, we are the client in the client world. So we need to do some changes in the query. So let's create a command buffer to do that. And at the end, we can play back and dispose that command buffer. So when we receive that RPC, let's actually just use a debug.lock and we print the value inside the command, which is the server message RPC command dot value dot message. And also we are going to destroy that entity because we received the message and we no longer need that entity. So we're going to use the command buffer destroy entity to take care of that. So let's actually go in and play the editor. But before we do that, I am going to create a build for the project again. So in the same build folder, and now we can go ahead and play the editor. So we see client connected with ID one. And let's actually go to the build settings and inside the player settings in the resolution and presentation, I am going to also check run in the background. And now if we play the editor again, we have the first client connected. Let's start another instance of the client. And now we have the second client connected. And if I go ahead and hit the space key on this client, a message shows up for this client. 
and if I hit the space key and the editor, it is going to print another message for that client. So if we start another instance of the client, we see that it's going to print that client connected with that ID. And if I hit the space key, it's going to print the index and version of this client. So that's basically how you could call RPC commands inside netcode for entities. There is also another way you could do that, but that's a little complicated and I'm going to talk about it in another video. Right now, this is just good enough to send RPCs and it's also very simple and easy to learn. So I'm going to finish this topic here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.